Civil Disobedience, is an essay written by Henry David Thoreau in 1849. The essay explores the theme of individual resistance against unjust government actions. By civil disobedience, Thoreau refers to peaceful protest against the injustice law in order to bring social change and development. This essay is about the relationship between the citizens and the government. He puts forward some suggestions for the betterment and tries to present how a government system should be. Thoreau establishes an antagonistic relationship between the American government and the American people, arguing that the current government hinders the people's natural leanings towards moral decisions. So in this case, it is the people's responsibility to reject this status and take action to re-establish the nation's freedom. Here are the main themes of the essay. Resistance is the highest form of patriotism to protest. Thoreau was a firm proponent for non-violent resistance and considered it as an instrument of protesting against unjust acts. He believed that non-violent resistance was a powerful weapon that could be used to bring about social change. He argued that non-violent resistance was morally superior to violent resistance and it was more effective in achieving long-lasting change. Protest is the highest form of patriotism. People should be given the rights of protest by the government for the development of a country. Thoreau affirms the absolute right of individuals to withdraw their support from a government whose policies are immoral or unjust. Thoreau suggests that love and loyalty for the country can be a virtue as long as this love is for the betterment for the state. However, Thoreau was also very uncomfortable with how his fellow citizens embodied patriotism. To him, patriotism was not an attitude to be celebrated, but rather a posture that diminished his fellow citizens' moral character and made them submissive to ideas and values that were not their own. He argues for redefining patriotism. For him, True patriots are not those who readily submit to the state, who blindly follow the government injustice in the name of false patriotism. He condemns them, that this type of patriotism discourages citizens' rational criticism of their country and thus erodes their ability to think deeply about important issues and act in a conscientious manner. For him, real patriots are those who are working to uphold the ideals upon which the country was founded, those are real patriots who challenge the state and therefore make it better. They don't hesitate to go against the powerful government in order to protect their state. He believes individuals should give rights to raise their voice against the injustice, even if it requires violating laws. A man may not be able to eradicate any wrong. It is not his duty to eradicate it, rather it is his duty to wash his hands of it. He argued that blindly obeying the government without questioning its actions was not patriotic, but rather a form of servitude. He advocates for a patriotism which is founded on constructive criticism. For him, true patriotism meant actively resisting the actions of the state that were contrary to the values of justice, freedom, and individual rights. He believed that resistance to unjust laws was a way of affirming one's commitment to democracy and to the ideals of justice and equality. In this sense, Thoreau's ideas on civil disobedience could be seen as a form of patriotism. Notable leaders who were influenced by Thoreau include Gandhi, who drew on the philosophy of non-violent resistance when opposing government actions as a result India gained independence from England. Likewise, Martin Luther King was influenced by Thoreau when organizing protests, marches, boycotts, and other actions to call for civil rights for black people, the poor, and other populations. That government is the best which governs the least. The most ideal form of government is one which exercises the least power and control over its citizens. Thoreau believes that government is an inherently intrusive force that stifles the creative enterprise of the people. The idea behind this statement is that individuals should be free to live their lives without excessive interference from the government. Thoreau believed that too much government control can snatch individual freedom and creativity. Actually, Thoreau prefers no rule but asks for at once a better government, where conscience rules above the majority. He claims that American people would have accomplished even more than they have if the government did not get in the way of people's will. However, it's important to note that Thoreau was not advocating for anarchy or lawlessness. He believed that government has a role to play in society, but that its power should be limited and its actions should be based on the consent of the governed. However, his views on the role of government and the use of civil disobedience to protest unjust laws have also been controversial. Some have argued that his ideas are too extreme and would lead to chaos and anarchy, 
while others have praised him for his commitment to individual freedom and justice. Legal system. He criticizes the legal system of America. Thoreau presents government as useless in relation to moral issues. Voting is just an expression of majority sentiment. But actually this system is ruled by the majority who runs the administration without following principles. As a result, they always exercise their will. But it doesn't mean that they are always right. Thoreau begins, civil disobedience by explaining that governments are prone to abusing power, and that it is best for governments to govern as little as possible. Thoreau does not write that he wants no government, but rather that a better government is possible. He criticizes the fact that power is often acquired on the basis of strength rather than justice. At the same time, he argues, ordinary people do not have to put their conscience or moral decision-making entirely in the hands of the government. Thoreau asserts that he does not want to quarrel or to feel superior to others. He wants to conform to the laws of the land, but current laws are not honorable from a higher point of view. Politics and politicians act as though the universe were ruled by expediency. Police, jailers, and others who enforce the government, Thoreau argues, are like parts of a machine. They are prone to labeling as enemies those who criticize the government on the basis of conscience. Thoreau explains that he protests the organization of political government in the United States because it permits the system of slavery, which he is morally opposed to. He explains that voting is one way of expressing views, but one must accept that even when they vote for what they think is right, their vote may not prevail in the face of the majority. For this reason, Thoreau calls on abolitionists to withdraw their support for the government of his state, Massachusetts, to protest the United States' permission of slavery and involvement in the Mexican-American War. In this video, I have mentioned three important themes of this essay. In the next video, I will discuss about the rest of the themes of this essay. If you like my video then like comment and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section which type of video do you want in future.